Dear students, in this module, I'm going to talk about the energy involved in the folding of proteins and how a protein uh, can be evaluated in terms of energy. To start with, you know that multiple amino acids, they polymerize together and the protein chains are formed. So as a second step, these protein chains, they fold onto, uh, on top of themselves and take a 3D form or a folded protein. You would wonder, why do the proteins fold? What is the benefit the protein gets by folding onto itself? So, these questions need to be answered. Moreover, what is the advantage of a folded protein over an unfolded protein? Also, what are the factors that assist a protein in the folding process? So these questions will help you to evaluate the energy of the resulting protein. As you know, the basic ingredient of a protein is the amino acid. Well, that is simple. But if you look closely, amino acids vary and differ from each other in their properties. For instance, there are some polar amino acids, there are some charged amino acids, there are some hydrophobic amino acids. So they would be contributing differently into the structure formation process or the folding process in the protein. Very importantly, the hydrophobic amino acids or those amino acids which are not readily uh, forming hydrogen bonds, they f you know that they form the core of the protein. So this role is very important and needs to be studied at the amino acid level. Moreover, if you want to compute the energy of the overall protein structure, you need to look at how this energy changes when these amino acids they interact together. So the overall goal of folding, as dictated by Anfinson's thermodynamic hypothesis, is that the proteins fold for a unique, stable, and minimum free kinetic energy conformation. So what are the factors that abet this hypothesis? This is the bond formation between the atoms. So once the atoms Within the protein, they start making bonds or electrostatic interactions or even the van der Waals forces, then the energy can be looked at in that context. So, if this energy is minimized, then it means that the resulting protein has a minimum amount of energy available to it after the folding process and therefore is very stable. Vice versa, you have to maximize the interactions between the atoms towards calculating the energy of a protein. So if the proteins maximize the bonds that can be made between the side chains of various alpha carbons, and if they come together, then that is the folded protein. But which, which bonds are formed as a result of this folding? You know that the amino acids, for instance cysteine, can form disulfide bonds. There can be hydrogen bonds as well. There can be very weak hydrogen bonds or van der Waals forces that are also present between the different atoms. And there can be electrostatic interactions between the amino acids as well. So these interactions should be looked at together for you to estimate the energy of the resulting protein. If these interactions are large in number, then obviously the energy of the protein will be reduced great, uh, largely. So, simply... The greater the number of these bonds, the lesser 
is the free energy that is available within the protein for it to further interact and make some newer bond. Hence, the basic idea of thermodynamic stability is to maximize bonding in order to minimize the free energy.